Are you ready for a wildly outrageous new edition celebrating the best of the best, or perhaps should I say, the worst of the worst when it comes to jaw-dropping displays of human misjudgment? Get ready to witness evolution in action with Volume 5's Top 10 Most Special Darwin Award winners. I'm talking all-star Hall of Fame buffoons who executed truly spectacular life-ending stunts. We've got it all, electrocutions, explosions, poisoning, even an epic landmine roulette. Let's crack open a cold one and dive right into the best of the worst, shall we? Hello everyone and welcome to Wow Amazing. In this video, we'll go through the fifth volume of Darwin Award winners. But before we begin, we would like you guys, I would like you guys to subscribe to Wow Amazing and hit the notification bell so you do not miss out on amazing and entertaining content that will surely get you amazed. Oh, and by the way, watch to the end of this video and you'll be rewarded with a very special bonus candidate. So let's begin. From blatantly stupid people to actual geniuses, these are some of the most embarrassing ways people have died. Number 10, Father Knows Best. Our tragic tale begins like a scene from a soap opera. Dad Andrew living with his brood of three, new fiance and her trio of kids. One big happy family, right? Well, things took a dark turn one fateful day over a tub of chocolate icing. As the children quarreled over a missing dessert, tensions escalated. Andrew accused his 10-year-old of swiping the sweet stash, and a heated war of words erupted between father and son. Finally, Andrew dragged the boy to the garage for a man-to-man. -man. But this private chat soon spiraled from merely emotional to disastrously fatal. In his infinite parental wisdom, Andrew handed his furious child a five-inch kitchen knife. Go on, stab me if you hate me so much, he challenged. A fine lesson for anger management. Now the boy initially refused and put the blade down, but dear dad insisted, redepositing the weapon into his resistant hands during the heat of their row. Exasperated, the kid finally took Andrew up on his kind offer and planted the knife firmly in his dad's chest. Well, that escalated quickly. As he gasped his last breaths, Andrew wheezed in disbelief. Would you believe the kid did that? Yes, Andy, we would. Indeed, believe the boy you armed and dared to impale you shockingly followed through. Police charged the traumatized kid with manslaughter, but the court went easy on the provoked child. Let this be a reminder that parenting advice like walk it off or rub some dirt in it may be poor guidance when emotions run high. Handing weapons to angry children is generally ill-advised, so dads stick to doing timeouts and grand groundings. Save the knives for cake cutting, not settling domestic disputes, lest you wind up the victim of your own twisted fantasy. Number nine, motorcycle helmet law. Ex-protester, our next contender, a middle-aged motorcyclist from New York, let his libertarian convictions get the best of him during a protest ride. The bareheaded Phil Contos, 55, ironically lost his life while demonstrating against a mandatory motorcycle helmet law. Police reports show Phil braked too hard while riding helmet free, causing a deadly series of physics, fishtailing, flipping over the handlebars and fatally meeting the pavement head first. We can't help but ponder, how exactly does one flip over one's handlebars? News reports fail to paint this critical scene, but Phil panic braked while leaning forward? We don't know. Catch a patch of gravel mid-turn? Maybe. Attempt a stuntman's jump without proper protective gear. The public may never know. But here's what we do know. Certain laws have physics on their side, and there's no repealing the laws of gravity. The formula is simple. Mass times speed above a critical threshold equals disaster for your human frame. So, should helmet laws be mandatory for one's own protection? That's debatable. As poet Robert Frost famously said, I hold it to the inalienable right of anybody to go to hell in his own way. Can't fault a man for his beliefs, even at the cost of his own melon head. We offer our condolences to Phil's family, and we suggest any future protesters pack a helmet just in case their convictions fail to repeal the laws of physics. Number eight, double Darwin Award, sports training. The setting was Rotterdam Station, a bustling hub where the energy of over 300 soccer fans lingered after a heated match between rivals Feyenoord and Ajax. The time was 6 p.m. on a rowdy Sunday evening in the boisterous crowd of a two gents apparently feeling some liquid courage. The 
because they stumbled onto the train tracks to play a game of daring chicken. These brainiacs had a brilliant plan to lay on the tracks as the 603 train came roaring through at 130 kilometers per hour. One would press his body flat while the other knelt nearby, heads tilted at what they assumed was a safe angle. Gonna be legendary, but turns out fast trains run wider and lower than expected and in a split second both gents earned themselves a double Darwin Award, obliterated to bits. The bloody mess brought train traffic to a standstill for hours while authorities cleaned up. And the 300 witnesses on the platform were, shall we say, not thrilled about the so-called entertainment. But at least our two pals got to experience some fleeting glory before abruptly meeting their maker at Rotterdam Station. Maybe next time try streaking the field instead, lads. Far less deadly. Number seven, Fishman. The story of Neil the Fishman of Melbourne is one that induces both giggles and grimaces. When Neil's decaying remains turned up in 1995 near Tulondo Reservoir, mysteries abounded. For one, he was clad head to toe in a handmade fish suit crafted from old waterbed vinyl. The bodysuit enclosed his entire body like a wetsuit mummy costume, complete with tail. The only openings were two eye holes and a long zipper down the back which would have required Houdini skills to unzip alone. Not exactly approved by any costume board. Apparently Fishman Neil was attempting a solo swim back from the reservoir while severely limited on both breathing and mobility. Yet a second yellow suit was found back at his house, suggesting this was not his first Fishman rodeo. So what would motivate a grown man to fabricate an elaborate merman outfit and pretend to be aquatic life? Police say medications for epilepsy and diabetes may have impaired Neil's judgment, but locals spin wild tales of fishman swinging from ropes into the lake. Perhaps he truly envisaged himself as an itch thyandrothal. Either way, his desire to become and embody a fish became a self-fulfilling prophecy. The fishman finally got to sleep with the fishes after that last fateful swim. Neil's tragic death brings the down under fish impersonation fatality count to one. We'll see if his legacy inspires any copycat fish people lurking out there, but remember Neil's cautionary tale. Uh, tale. Want to impersonate aquatic life? Best keep that zipper loose, mate. Number six, Fatal Footsie. Our next entry takes us to a lively cafe in Sveiring, Cambodia, where three friends share some drinks and barbs. As day drinks to night drinks, the vibe escalates from friendly jabs to outright insults. Finally, one disgruntled chap decides enough is enough. This calls for drastic measures. Like a magician pulling rabbits from his hat, this genius whips out a decades-old claymore mine found just lying around his backyard, as one does in rural Cambodia. This will win the argument, our maestro declares triumphantly in one of Cambodia's 12 languages. Now, what transpires next can only be described as a high-stakes mashup between Russian roulette and the flaming bag of dog poop prank. Our heroic man tosses the live mine under the table as the village looks on in horror. The three begin taking turns chugging their drinks and stomping where the explosive lays. Bombs away. Now these gents were definitely aware that decades of armed conflict have littered Cambodia with active landmines. Citizens constantly face gruesome reminders not to toy with these war machines waiting to decay. Yet here we are, three men playing a fatal round of foot bomb bingo like it's a happy hour entertainment. Minutes later, boom, goes the mine, obliterating all three unwise stooges plus the surrounding cafe in a tremendous blast. Gentlemen, next time keep the party tricks to coin tricks and beer pong. No need to get explosive when friendly ribbing goes south. When in doubt, just order another round. Number five, love struck Louis III. This historical Darwin Award goes back over a thousand years to King Louis III of France. Now, despite his brief three-year reign, this monarch was kicking major butt with military victories and Viking ass kickings left and right. But alas, his success met a tragic end, one fateful thirsty day. Imagine a fine autumn afternoon outside Saint-Denis when King Louis spies a beautiful maiden requiring his French affection. With reckless abandon, he gallops toward her paramour on horseback, eyes are fixed on his target, rather than, you know, where his royal highness is headed at ramming speed. Moments later, smack, 
and his skull goes straight into an inconveniently placed door lintel. His cranium cracks under the force of Cupid's heavy hand, say le more for Louis. The moral, gentlemen, take care when recklessly following your primal urges, lest the world come crashing down upon your head. Poor love-struck Louis serves as an eternal reminder to watch where you're going when blinded by la belle femme. Maybe next time just send the girl some flowers. Number four, rubbish. Baldwin Street in Dunedin, New Zealand is home to the world's steepest residential road according to the Guinness records. It is midnight and two thrill-seeking university students, Anna and her mate, hijack a rubbish bin, climb inside the plastic vessel and push off down the 38 degree slope for a makeshift sleigh ride. What could go wrong? Under the cover of darkness, the duo drags the wheeled bin to the precipice. Heart rates elevate as they wedge themselves into the bin's snug quarters and after a deep breath and a nod, down the bin bullets into the blackness. The stunt seemed a success at first, but residents' slumber was soon replaced by horror when the bin slammed into a parked trailer at the hill's base. Anna, 19, was killed instantly in the wreck, while her co-pilot luckily survived with head trauma. Guess no one checked the route for obstacles. While the exact speed was lost to history, their rubbish bin sled will not be memorialized in the Guinness records will chalk up their creative joyride attempt as failure. Perhaps starting on a less treacherous incline would have helped, but when the spirits move you, sometimes trash bins must fly at midnight. Anna and friend certainly gave it a good old college try. Alas, the bin bested them both that fateful night. Number three, breatharianism. Get ready for a Darwin Award that redefines food for thought. Meet Verity. A Scottish gal determined to test the limits of food-free living. The 48-year-old was attempting a 21-day cleanse to master breatharianism. For the uninitiated, breatharians believe food and water are optional, surviving on pranic energy from inhaling air alone. Because photosynthesis is for losers? The catalyst was big kahuna Jazz Muheen, an Australian ex-Ellen with thousands of followers, all allegedly living affably without food. Jazz claims breatharianism solves both anorexia and world hunger. Hmm, interesting theory. Though we can't ignore those test cases of anorexics and starving folk trying this whole no food thing with rather permanent results. But our girl Verity was undeterred by scientific recommendations to ingest, you know, food. Armed with a tent and iron will, she embarked on a seven day cleanse in the Scottish Highlands. Tragically, her spiritual quest ended just three weeks in when Verity perished from dehydration and exposure. Guess pranic energy couldn't protect her from the elements. Cult leader Jazz insisted Verity simply failed to meet her spiritual needs, not physical ones. Though Jazz herself snacks on tea and biscuits for pleasure when not surviving on liquid air. Air biscuits? Sign me up. But alas, no such luck for poor Verity who bit off more pranic energy than she could chew. We admire her dedication to starving herself spiritually. Too bad biology had other plans. Number two, wounded wire bites back. Out in farm country, Pennsylvania, two budding marksmen were honing their skills the old fashioned way, shooting at anything not bolted down for target practice. But these sharpshooters quickly tired of the usual options, bottles, mice, random birds. They required a worthy opponent. And so Daniel and his pal turned their sights onto local electrical insulators adorning the power poles around the property. These pear-shaped glass devices weren't much competition. Soon the duo had blasted six insulators to smithereens, but their victory was short-lived. Once the high voltage wire above snapped free from its broken supports and crashed to the ground below spewing sparks. Ever the hero, Daniel dashed over to prevent an inferno by boldly grasping the flailing live wire with his bare hands. Not a sparked bright idea. His valiant effort earned a thousand volts surging straight through his body. Down goes Daniel. Number one, killing time. Our final tale transports us to Glasgow, Scotland, where an opportunistic lad devised a brilliant plan to pilfer copper from the railway's power cables. He knew excess electricity surges through these lucrative lines between trains, dissipating harmlessly without active trains drawing current. So, he would simply shimmy under the tracks during those dormant windows and start hacksawing copper, pocketing his loot. Foolproof. Except our boy genius, 
neglected one tiny detail, the train schedule. When authorities discovered his charred remains still clutching the copper cable, they found a damning piece of evidence in his coat, an outdated rail timetable, listing arrival times 10 whole minutes off. Owlman leapt into action not realizing the train ahead was on schedule. The hurtling locomotive sent hundreds of volts coursing through his hacksaw directly into his body above. And so, the untimely end of a career copper caper. Alas, perhaps our eager thief should have set a Google alert for train delays rather than rely on paper schedules. A moment of silence for yet another scoundrel who tangled with electrical lines and came out extra crispy. Better luck next time. Bonus entry, laughing gas. No video of ours would be complete without a bonus entry, which brings us to the special bonus Darwin tale of two wannabes who should have known better. Meet Mark and Carol, a paramedic duo from Washington DC whose medical expertise evidently forgot to extend to recreational activities. These first responders were well versed in all things science and biology in order to save lives, so surely they understood the basic laws for respiration. Nope. One fateful day, off our daring duo decided to get frisky with some contraband laughing gas. Now nitrous oxide is mad fun at the dentist office or used sparingly on the streets for harmless highs. But newsflash, any pure gas lacking oxygen can still suffocate your brain cells. Yet Mark and Carol somehow missed that day in paramedic school about the whole breathing oxygen thing. They gleefully hooked themselves up to masks, feeding straight from tanks of pure nitrous oxide in Mark's bachelor pad. Minutes later, our bonus winners win a forever nap, masks still attached to the hissing silver canisters. Mark was only 40 and Carol 30 years young, so much medical potential lost. As the fire department rep noted, Mark was one of the most educated guys around, so let this be a tale to a friendly PSA when playing with gases. Don't forget to include oxygen in the mix. Consider it our parting gift to you. You're welcome. Class dismissed. That's it for today's video. Tell us down in the comments which of these deaths was the stupidest, and do you know any other Darwin Award winners that deserve to be on the list? And guys, wait right here. You're missing an essential step. Don't forget to share this video with your friends. Also, subscribe to Wow Amazing and press the bell icon so you are one of the first to get wowed every time we upload a new video.